you're doing all of this fading and cross fading and wipes so it's very helpful to have a nice wide screen in fact we have two wide screens to be editing our video that makes it much easier to see those little tiny lines which will drive you crazy now you may notice down here we also have a very big and powerful PC and the reason we have this PC is that when you're done editing your video you need to render the video and that can take a long time if you have a small computer or if you use your notebook so we have a powerful computer to give us very fast rendering okay so background music is something we just mentioned we have background music in almost all of our videos and how do we do that well of course you drop the background music into one of the audio tracks and in that case you can see that down here the audio track I think this audio here is the actual speaking of the teacher that's me and then at the bottom is the music track but of course a more important question becomes where do you get your music from you just make up your music that'd be kind of hard you're busy aren't you can you just take it off the internet hey, easy answer no can you pay someone for it maybe can you go to a commercial agency and pay them for it yes you can but you need to read the contract very carefully those contracts for music can be very detailed for example if one person listens to it compared to a hundred people compared to a thousand people the price can actually be different. I know it's hard to believe, but that's the way music licensing works. So what's the answer to this? Well, there is no easy answer. Even if you play your own music, that music had to be written by somebody. If you're playing it from the music sheet, you cannot just play it and put it on YouTube and make money. That may be a problem. What if you make up your own music? Well, even if you make it up, are you sure no one's made anything like that before and can claim that it's their copyright material? Very, very difficult. So how to overcome this? Well, I don't have an easy answer, but YouTube has helped us a little bit, and that is YouTube now has a very large music selection that you can choose from, and they guarantee that that will not have copyright problems. So go ahead and Google that, look for YouTube, music or free music and they encourage you to use those is that a great idea well it's safe what's the problem with it it's possible you may use the same music other people have used and i'm sure you've seen that when you're on youtube you can see someone's video and it has the exact same background music as somebody else's video well that's the way it goes youtube does have more and more and you could pay but again it gets really complicated so be extra careful what you do about that now what happens when you're done your video and you want to render it rendering is not easy for a small computer the best answer to rendering is to have a powerful computer so what does a powerful computer mean well obviously it means a desktop like this that is not a notebook a notebook is not going to do it and this is a nice big case but that's not what matters the most. What matters is what's inside of that case. So we have a nice, beautiful case. We've decked out here with some LEDs, very pretty. And when we go to the hardware table, we'll look at that. So I'm gonna back that up there. Um, I won't say anything more, it gets too complicated too fast. So I think that's enough for this unit. So what do you do when you're done your video? You need to edit it, you need to render it. So you need some computer hardware and you need some software. What's my main point? Don't jump to conclusion that something your friend gave you is the best. There may be other options, and those options include free software, open software. They also include some software you can pay for, like Vegas, which is a very reasonable price if your company or your organization is willing to pay that. So good luck with your editing, and be patient. It's not always easy. Okay, so what do we have? We have our media. This is where we pull in our video, our B-roll, our photos, and we can just drag them right onto the timeline. So at any time, we can take a piece of video and we can just pull it right in and make sure it's on the right line, the right layer, and then we've got video there. We can cut and change the length of that video. 
and we can cause it to fade in and fade out slowly like that. And we don't lose anything, that's a good thing. And then we have our audio out, so we make sure our audio is playing at the right level, which is up towards the top, but not into the red peaking area. And then our timelines are organized here, top layers on top, bottom layers you may not be able to see. So usually audio is down at the bottom. And most important thing though to remember, the most important thing to remember, <laughs> the most important thing to never ever forget when you're video editing is, can you guess what that is? Save. If you don't save, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because just the things I just did took what, 10 minutes, those few things? If I lose them, I'll lose them permanently. I need to do them all over again. Video editors are always a bit unstable, all of them. Even the most professional ones crash on your Mac or on your PC often. Every time you do something, go and save. So remember, what's the most important thing when you're video editing? Save. Always be saving. Never wait too long to save. All right, now when we're all done, what are we going to do? We're going to render. So, so far we've got the raw footage here. We're editing it here. And now we're done. Our masterpiece is ready. So in Vegas, what you can do is you select what part of the video you want to render. That is, what part do you want to send out to be a file? Now let me zoom out here. So I'm going to zoom out and see the whole project. You can see our project has many parts. So this is a video part here. This is another video part here. And maybe we want to render these separately. So in Vegas, at the very top, you grab the space there and you can select a selection. And you can render just that bit. Or you can render the whole file if you don't choose anything. But usually what you do is you choose from the beginning to the end of your video and then you can render. So let's go ahead and choose just one of these parts. So let's say I want to render this part here. Then I go to the file menu and it has a render as. The render as will have many options but in the lab we're usually going to have it preset ready to go to the one that works best for us and for uploading to YouTube and that's this setting here. On the left you have your main compression software approaches and on the right the detail. So we're using Sony ABC MVC and we're getting it ready for 1020 by 1080 30p output for the internet. And so this is all preset. Now there are many different ways you could do it but this is the one that works best for us. And then when I'm ready I just say render and it's going to go ahead and render the area I chose. Here you see the option render loop region only. That means render the area I selected. If you uncheck that, it'll render the whole, the whole thing no matter what. Even if you have extra space at the end or extra space at the beginning, or you have multiple projects in there, it'll render everything, which is usually not what you want. So usually you want to choose, you want to choose some amount and say just render this or click here twice. Just render this. Okay, that's a lot to learn. The best way to learn video editing is to go try it. There are many good practices, many ways to do things well, but if you don't begin, you'll never know. So give it a try, don't be frustrated, and remember again, what was the most important thing? Right there, right there.